My name is Marie Owens Thompson, and I am in charge of sustainability and economics at IATA. Thank you very much for your time today. In a recent interview, you mentioned connectivity is key to sustainable development. Can you please elaborate on that? Yes, uh, I think uh, sometimes uh, people forget, you know, that throughout our whole human history, uh, we have been, uh, you know, joined at the hip with the concept of mobility or connectivity. Yeah, whichever word you prefer, it's not only a question of transportation these days, it's also other forms of connectivity, of course, uh, internet and so on. But, uh, you know, in the early days it was first uh, camels and horses. I love horses, so I, I like that. And then boats, and then uh, railroads, and cars, and then finally planes and jet engines. And at every uh, such junction, uh, humanity has uh, made, you know, huge strides forward. And, uh, and this is obviously because mobility is not only a question of moving people and goods around, it's also a question of um, moving ideas and uh, innovation around the globe. And if we interrupt these processes, well, then we will have an inferior economic outcome. So I would say it's obviously not the only thing that drives economic growth, but mobility and connectivity is a necessary ingredient for economic development. And um, can you maybe just share with our viewers some of the insights and forecasts that you have, in the, have seen in the aviation industry for 2023? Yes, yeah, so we are delighted to see that uh, traffic is closing in on the 2019 level. Uh, we're thinking that we are perhaps at about 12% below that level this year. So 2024 should logically be the year when we can say that we have recovered fully from the COVID pandemic uh, drastic closure. Uh, but it has to be said in this context as well that that doesn't unfortunately by any means imply that we are not uh, still impaired because had we not had the COVID crisis, then we would have been at a much higher level of activity today. So, uh, so it's a partial recovery, I, I think we can say, which is of course uh, already great news and, and notable given the depth of the crisis that 2020 represented for our industry, uh, a historic impact with losses of about $140 billion for the industry as a whole which today we think that we are reversing into a profit of about 10 billion for 23 as a whole, the first uh, profitable year then for our industry since the COVID crisis. And how would you say airlines and governments can work together to achieve a more sustainable future for the industry? Well, you know, you would think that that would be easy, right? Because everybody has already agreed. Uh, clearly the uh, Chicago Convention, which set up civil aviation back in 1947, was hugely inspirational, where those people understood um, that uh, the importance of uh, mobility, and in this case, in particular, aviation, for economic development, for peace, for, uh, you know, having uh, people working together. Uh, so, so all of the at least 193 UN member states have signed on to the Chicago Convention. And uh, if you look uh, furthermore than at uh, the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals, same number of countries have signed those and aim for a global economy that is prosperous, inclusive and sustainable. So uh, in my mind, I think uh, everybody has agreed but uh, interestingly enough, um, you know, the actions don't always uh, align with those agreements. And that is, of course, uh, regrettable because as a global industry, we are really very dependent on harmonization and trying to have uh, the same standards and policies uh, applied across the globe. Any departures from that kind of standardization means a more fragmented uh, aviation industry, lower service, but you know, uh, yeah, not as uh, good outcomes as we could have if we managed to all work together. And lastly, 
Um, IATA has announced it will be taking place in Dubai next year, the AGM, where COP28 will also be held this year, coincidentally. Does IATA have plans to partner with any other sustainability organizations or alliances in the future? Well, we do partner with um, various organizations, uh, of course, habitually, and we will certainly continue to do so. And um, uh, we, again, in the spirit of uh, understanding that we need to work everybody together, uh, almost everything we do is uh, in, in, involve collaborations of different types. We have, uh, for instance, uh, released our roadmaps for how we think that we will get to net zero by 2050. And uh, the, there's more than 30 organizations and 120 people uh, from outside of uh, uh, our own organization that have been involved in, uh, in, uh, in that piece of research. And, um, and again, you know, if we look uh, more uh, specifically at our value chain, which obviously includes uh, airports, uh, traffic control, and, and um, distribution, and, uh, and a few others, uh, you know, the, it, it takes all of us, plus the oil companies, you know, to deliver the product, which is that we have the service rather, yeah, that we can transport people and goods uh, from A to B. It, we really need everybody to be able to do that. And therefore it's in everybody's interest, quite frankly, that we uh, join forces and try to solve this big challenge of becoming a sustainable uh, sector by 2050, all of us together. I think that, that, that is uh, perhaps the, even the biggest challenge in the world today, f you know. Uh, for us and uh, and the second biggest challenge in our quest for sustainability is the speed at which it needs to happen. Mm -hmm. We have 28 years now to 2050, so any delay will obviously put that horizon in peril. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. I thank you very much for your kind interest and hope to see you again. <laughs>